Do Christians celebrate Easter? I gotta admit, I do like candy. And I do like spring. Spring's fun. But do Christians celebrate Easter? Well, the answer is no. Easter is not a Christian holiday. And neither is Christmas now that we're at it. So why do we do these things? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Just because... So let's try to talk about this biblically. I got a question from somebody on our Instagram who follows us. I appreciate you. Said, hi, Brother Spencer. Hi. Anyway, I hope you don't mind, but I want to ask you about Easter. The way there are Easter egg hunts and all. As a parent, I've never participated in those festivities with my seven-year-old daughter. Do you have a YouTube video on this? Or would you mind to briefly share your thoughts? I'm a bit conflicted. I'm not sure if this would mislead my child. Is it harmless or harmful? I've always done my best to make sure she knows that Easter slash the Resurrection Sunday is about Jesus. This is the same reason we don't do Santa. Thank you for your time. They don't do Santa? You sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> if you rearrange the letters of Santa, you get something bad. <laughs> Okay, so what is the deal? Why do we call this Easter? Well, it's actually very complicated. There's a lot of dates that you have to know and understand and how calendars work and how certain dates applied on certain days. And I got in there, I haven't looked at it a long time, got in there, kind of wrestled with it. And after a few minutes, my mind was just like... And I have to tell you, this is this is not simple stuff, and I'm going to try my best to explain this to you in such a way so that I'm not speaking theology, I'm actually speaking normal people talk. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Now, the book of Acts mentions Easter, and it gives some clues here about the persecution of the early church. It says, now that that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, and and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So the key here, of course, we see Easter there in chapter number 12, verse 4. But the thing we have to look at here is the days of unleavened bread. Now, people have to understand that uh, Passover was, of course, the Jewish holiday that was given in the Old Testament when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. There was a lamb that was slain on the day of Passover. But after that, there were seven days of unleavened bread. Now, here's where the complicated parts come. Uh, I'm just going to show you just a blank eye calendar on my MacBook here and just show you kind of what was going on. Basically, the Passover was given the second month of the year, which was Nisan, which we call that April today, and it was supposed to happen on the 14th. So basically, like on the 14th here, you would slay a Paschal lamb, a Passover lamb, and then for the next seven days from the 14th or really from the 15th to the 21st, you would have what was called the Feast of Unleavened Bread, meaning that there would be no leaven in your home and you would would just eat unleavened bread for seven days. This was what was supposed to happen every year on the 14th of April. So the 14th, they would slay the lamb, and the next seven days, 15th through 21st, would be the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, the difficulty in all this is, is that they use a different calendar back then, and also the, you know, today in the modern day, midnight is the end of the day where the next day rolls over. But back in those days, it was 6 o'clock p.m. So basically, 6 o'clock p.m. Tuesday night was technically Wednesday in that world. How that That's just how they thought, and that's how that was. So with that in mind, I give you a, just a simple little little uh, chart here. This is something I found online, and I think this kind of tells you what's going on. So on the 14th of Nisan, which ended up being Tuesday night at 6 o'clock p.m., right here at this point right here, they would actually slay the Paschal lamb right then. That's the night that Jesus did Passover with all, with all his friends and was actually crucified what we would call Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. And so he's crucified that day. Then he was taken down, and he spent Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the grave, and technically on Saturday night, somewhere between there and Sunday morning, uh, before the sun rose up on Sunday morning, he rose. It was discovered that he rose from the grave. By the way, don't ever buy the lie that Jesus was crucified on Friday. Good Friday doesn't work. He has to be in the grave three days and three nights. And if he's, you know, crucified on Friday, that I'm I'm not a math guy, but I just don't see three days and three nights in there. But whatever, crucified on Wednesday morning, he spent Thursday, Friday, Saturday in the grave, and on Sunday. 
Sunday morning, they discovered that he had risen. So where does Easter fall into all this? Well, the problem is, is that Easter would happen sometimes around the same time as the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Easter was always changing every year. The date of Easter was determined after the spring equinox. They would wait for a full moon in the sky, and then the Sunday after that was Easter. Now, if you've seen Third Adam 3, Rise of the Divine Feminine, and really any of our other stuff, you'll understand that Easter is a term having to do with Astarte or Isis or the Queen of Heaven, as we have talked about her before. Isis and Astarte and Easter are the same word for the same female goddess. Basically, what the Easter festival was, was a pagan week-long festival of debauchery and immorality and sexuality and all kinds of things like that. Basically, the whole thing was a gigantic raunch fest, and sometimes it happened the same week as the Passover. Now, here in the book of Acts, chapter 12, we see here that there was, he was talking about Easter to bring him forth to the people. We find here that the actual Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread happened the week before Easter that year. So you find here evidence that these two holidays oftentimes are very close to each other. Sometimes they happen at the same time. And so once you understand like the history of Constantine, how that he made the early church, the state church, and kind of merged the church and Roman paganism together, it's always been been something we've been trying to fight against as Christian people, and I think the modern church is doing the same thing through pagan music that we're trying to bring into the church, which is the origins of Christian rock and roll, which is what we're trying to do, and uh, all of that understanding to, together. Basically, throughout history, a lot of people have just said, well, hey, e Easter and Passover are the same thing. Let's just conflate the two terms and just call it Easter and just be done with it, because it's very complicated and it's, very, it's really not simple to understand. So the question is, do Christians celebrate Easter? The answer is no, we do not celebrate a female fertility goddess, which is what that was all about. And guys, the reason that Easter is represented by a rabbit is because that was an ancient pagan Roman symbol for fertility. And when Hugh Hefner in his Playboy franchise and magazine, all that stuff he was producing, when he chose the bunny as the symbol of that, he was making the correct choice because that was a symbol for procreation and fornication and all that. It was a symbol of just living in sexual sin, which is exactly what the Romans did that week. It's the same thing. It is a worship of the divine feminine. That's what it means, and that's what it always has mean. So do we as Christians celebrate Easter? No, we don't. We don't. Just It's just the fact that sometimes the dates are similar and they overlap, and so a lot of people just carelessly say, hey, we just worship Easter here, and they don't even know what they're saying. So no, the church believes and celebrates in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is alive, and he is alive forever more. So my family, do we celebrate, you know, bunny rabbits and whatever? No, we don't really do all that. We, we celebrate Jesus and make it all about Jesus, and that's what we want to do. And that that's just a thing that we have chosen to do as a family. Now, I have noticed this, that a lot of churches today are just calling it Resurrection Sunday. And I think that's good. I, th I think it is Resurrection Sunday. That's what we need to celebrate as Christians, because we're not, we're not pagans, of course. And so I think Resurrection Sunday is a lot better term to use. I think when we we talk about Easter. I think everybody just kind of understands what is meant by saying that. But technically, we do not celebrate Easter. That is a pagan Roman holiday, and we don't celebrate that. But we do celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He got up from the grave. The Bible says in Mark 16, verse 5, and entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with a in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. I'm thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ is not a dead God. He is a living God. And by the way, Christianity is the only religion going on in the world right now where the founder is alive and well, even still today. Thank God for that. He's alive. If you go look at the grave of Muhammad, Muhammad's dead. There's Muhammad bones in there. If you go look at the grave of Buddha, there, Buddha's dead. There's Buddha bones in there. But if you go over there to a place called Gordon's tomb there in Jerusalem, you ain't going to find no Jesus bones there because Jesus is a risen Savior. He is alive and he is well and he's doing pretty good. He don't even have a headache. I have a headache, but Jesus doesn't have a headache right now. Thank God for a risen Savior, a living hope, a, a, a Jesus that is alive and alive forevermore, sitting on the right hand of God, the Father, ever living and making intercession for me. Thank you, Jesus, for that. I'm thankful that I serve a risen God. And no, I don't celebrate Easter. That's just, I mean, but I do like candy. 
If you don't like candy, then you're just weird. I am judging you if you don't like candy. And if I eat some candy, don't you judge me. Whatever. Nothing wrong with candy. Just eat some candy if you want to. But uh, but just understand that uh, it's not about Easter bunnies. It's about Jesus. Boy, this video was a lot of fun. Well, hey, guys, we love you. Hey, if there's a red subscribe button below, it means you're not subscribed to this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Just do it. And be a part of what we're going to be doing. We're doing a lot of good content in the very near future coming up. You don't want to miss it. Be a part of that. God bless you all. We love you. If this video was a blessing to you, hit that like button, and we certainly would appreciate that. Thank you very much. You guys have a wonderful day. And uh, I need some candy now. Where's candy? And by the way, go watch Third Adam. It's on the screen back there. Go watch that. That's pretty good. You'll enjoy that. God bless you all. We'll see you.